Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Drop. And this is my performance review of the Anta Shockwave 5 Pro. So this is the actual shoe that Kyrie Irving plays in, the Pro version. The regular Shockwave 5, he doesn't really play in. Uh, he plays in the Pro version and the Pro version is significantly more expensive. It, it is available on Famuji and it's available on Famuji for 200 bucks, which is freaking expensive. The regular Shockwave 5, however, I believe goes for around like 120 bucks, right? 130 bucks. So if you guys do want a cop, I try to leave a link in the description box. And of course, if you guys didn't know, Kyrie left Nike or I guess Nike kind of kicked him out, I guess, right? Um, but then he joined Anta and now he is the creative director as well for his own shoes. And he's heavily involved in the design of his own shoe, right? So uh, he is going to get a signature shoe and hopefully in the near future. Uh, but right now, this is the shoe that he's playing in, right? Uh, but let's get it started right off with the Traccionese. And the Traction is pretty similar to the regular Shockwave 5, right? If you look at the actual kind of pattern, right? But then uh, here in the regular Shockwave 5, uh, in the forefoot, we have this kind of pattern. It's a little bit different, but for the most part, it's very, very similar, right? And we have some triangle shapes that are going opposite to each other pretty much throughout the entire outsole. So uh, you don't really have to break it in. It's pretty much good right out the box. However, it's not very good on dust, right? So if you're playing on a clean court, you're gonna be having a really good time. You have really good stops. You have a really nice, loud, high-pitched squeak as well, which I do like. Now, it has nothing to do with performance, of course, but I like to have a nice little squeak, right? So all that is good. So if you're playing on a clean court, you're gonna be good to go. If you're playing on a dusty court, however, I did pick up a little bit of dust and it was affected by dust a good amount, right? So it picked up dust pretty quickly, right? So after like one to two plays, I had to wipe again. Uh, it's a very easy wipe though. I just go one to two easy wipes and I'm good to go. But uh, I did have to wipe pretty frequently. So if you don't like to wipe and if you're playing on a clean court, probably don't get the shoe. But if you don't mind wiping, then you should be fine, right? It was never really dangerous for me when I was playing on a dusty court. However, it was kind of annoying because I did have to wipe pretty frequently frequently and I didn't really have amazing stops until I did wipe again because it like I said it did pick up dust pretty quickly so if you're playing on a dusty court probably this isn't the best option right and also if you're playing on an outdoor court you should be fine uh, there are a lot of grooves and the rubber is pretty hard and of course this is Anta Chinese companies usually make very durable outsoles right so uh, for the most part I had a really good time in it uh, uh, like if it was a really dusty court then I really didn't like playing the shoe that much uh, but if it was like kind of dirty and wasn't too bad then I, I could just wipe and I I had a pretty good time, right? So I uh, just be careful on the dusty court, but for the most part, I had a pretty good time, right? So there's a the traction there. Moving on to the heel to toe transition, also pretty dang smooth, right? So here in the heel, we have a very nice curved shape, right? Although it is pretty caged, like it's heavily caged here in the heel, so there's not a whole lot of compression from the actual midsole, but we have this pretty nice shape here in the heel, and then the forefoot, we have a nice curved shape and a lot and a lot of forefoot flex. Look at that, it's super duper easy to flex, right? I'm just doing it with one finger, so it's it's a very smooth feeling shoe and that's something that I really like about the shoe. Uh, there's uh, there's shoes that are very, very stiff, you know, like the Jordan 12 and stuff like that. But for me, in my personal opinion, I like to have a very nice, smooth uh, feel in my in the sole of my shoes, which the Shockwave 5 Pro does have. And also the regular Shockwave 5 has as well, right? But uh, both of these have a midfoot chain plate, right? This is carbon fiber, so it doesn't really have any type of flex here in the midfoot. So uh, it has good torsional support. So overall, heel to toe transition is very, very smooth. And now moving on to the cushioning setup. The cushioning setup super duper nice and I would say it's really nice for Kyrie style of play or like for guards you know. First of all something that I noticed and something that I really liked about this shoe is uh, the step in comfort and also the core feel. The core feel is really, really good in the Shockwave 5 Pro and also the regular Shockwave 5, right? So I'd say you're very, very low to the ground. It has one of the best core feels I can get right now. And uh, so that's something that I really like as a guard, right? So if you like core feel, you're gonna love the Shockwave 5 Pro and the regular Shockwave 5. And also we have full length nitrogen foam, right? And it looks like Boost and it's pretty similar to Boost. And it's pretty much the same exact foam here in the regular Shockwave 5. So uh, yeah, there's not that much of a difference there. And also if you look at the strobe board underneath the insole is very, very nice because you have an amazing soft mesh strobe board and it's really, really soft in the Shockwave 5 Pro. In the regular Shockwave 5, it's not a mesh strobe board, but it's still really soft. So you can feel the nitrogen foam uh, right underneath your foot, but you can feel the nitrogen foam uh, in the Shockwave 5 Pro more and it's really soft. You can feel it 
pretty much right underneath your foot. You have a lot of compression and it feels very comfortable when you're walking around and also when you're playing. So uh, step in comfort also is amazing in the shoe. Impact protection also is adequate. I had really no issues with my foot hurting because of the great underfoot cushion, right? So the strobe board uh, works really well. And also I love how they uh, combine that with the amazing core feel, right? And also uh, all of that, it still has good impact protection, right? Usually if you have good court feel, uh, the impact protection isn't as good, but in the Shockwave 5 Pro, it's still pretty good, right? I wouldn't say, of course, it's not the best, right? If you're looking for amazing impact protection, like, I don't know, the Zoom GT Jump 2, like the AG4 and stuff like that, it's not gonna be as good, but it was adequate for me, especially for how low to the ground it is. So it's an amazing cushioning setup, super duper comfortable, and I really enjoy uh, playing the Shockwave 5 Pro and also the regular Shockwave 5 uh, for that matter, right? So it's a very similar cushioning setup, but the Shockwave 5 Pro, feels a little bit better for stepping comfort and also it feels like the the caging here in the heel is a little bit softer in the pro compared to the regular shockwave 5 this is really really stiff here uh the the pro has a little bit more give to it so uh, i like the cushioning setup in the pro a little bit more right so there's that moving on to the upper so the upper we're using like a textile material right and uh here in the toe box it's really really thin look at that super duper thin material it conforms to your foot extremely well and if you do toe drags you're gonna be covered right you have uh, the rubber outside coming up a lot and also you have this plastic and same thing with the regular shockwave 5 right so if you're doing toe drag you should be fine it feels very supportive uh and it feels great on foot and then here in the midfoot we have another like textile material which feels extremely thin as well but also very very supportive right uh for the tongue we have a, a little bit of padding it's not super well padded and then also it's a half booty construction tongue giving you a better overall one-to-one -one fit and then here in the ankle area we have a singular achilles pad kind of right uh but it doesn't really protrude out that much you know what i mean it just looks like it's a different type of material uh that they stitched here it's not really like a achilles pad but anyways uh, it has a good amount of padding here in the ankle area it feels nice and comfortable uh, but for the most part it's a very minimal upper right so on foot it feels great it feels supportive it feels minimal and it conforms to your foot very well and also the quality is pretty dang nice right it doesn't feel cheap at all i mean it better not feel cheap because it's a 200 dollars shoe uh but yeah the upper i really had no issues with and also this part kind of reminds me of the Kyrie theory. You guys remember this kind of like, uh, it has a different material right here where your forefoot is. So uh, that gives you a little bit better support, right? Uh, because it is a more supportive material right here. And now moving on to the fit, I went true to size and it fits me extremely well, right? So uh, my toes go very close to the edge of the shoe. So lengthwise, true to size, it was good for me. And then also here in the toe box, it's pretty dang snug. And also width wise, it is slightly narrow. So it's a perfect fit for me. It's a, that's actually a really, really good fit for me going true to size. So if you want a nice snug fit, go true to size. If you have a wider foot or you want a roomier toe box, probably go up a half size or maybe even a full size if you want super roomy. But for me, I was good to go with true to size. And then also here in the midfoot, it does get pretty narrow too. So uh, I did like that as well for the fit. And we have a pretty high heel tab, which makes the shoe very easy to just slip on, right? So a fit was very, very good for me. And it's a very similar fit for me here in the regular Shockwave 5 as well. And now moving on to the uh, support and lockdown, we have amazing support and lockdown, especially for lateral containment, right? So if you look at all the lateral counters here, we have this plastic coming up acting as a sidewall. It kind of comes up, uh, like spikes a little bit. And the, also, like I said, the material is pretty supportive too. And then uh, here in the heel, we have, I uh, kind of like this cage that kind of comes up acting as a sidewall too. And uh, we also have an internal TPU heel counter. So lateral containment, even if you're a bigger dude, you're gonna be fine. Your foot is not coming out of the footbed really at all. Uh, so yeah, lateral containment was really good. And obviously if Kyrie's playing in it, you, you need to have really good lateral containment, right? You need to have really good lateral support because Kyrie's doing a lot of shifty moves. He's doing a lot of cuts. He's stopping really fast as well. So he needs that support and that does make sense, right? And also lateral stability is very good. You can see how wide the shoe is with this outrigger and it's very, very sharp as you guys can see. So lateral stability was very good for me as well. Uh, so overall support in lockdown was really good. I had no issues with heel slippage either. When I tightened the laces down, my foot felt locked into the shoe. My foot wasn't really moving around inside of the shoe either. All right, moving on to the weight of the shoe if i remember correctly it's a it's a little bit lighter than the average i think yeah so 12 ounces for uh that that shoe and then let's check the other shoe 
12.3 ounces. So let's average it to like 12.15, right? So yeah, that's a little bit lighter than the average. The average weight of my shoes is around 12 and a half ounces. So uh, yeah, this shoe feels pretty light. It feels very minimal because of the upper and it feels really comfortable because of the great step and comfort. You can feel the nitrogen foam right underneath your foot. And also I really like the court feel. The court feel is absolutely amazing, right? And let's check it, comparing it to the regular Shockwave 5, which is 12.8 ounces. So the Pro is definitely a little bit lighter. And also you feel extremely responsive. You know, the traction is really good, especially if you're playing on a clean court, you're low to the ground. The cushion is responsive, but also very comfortable and support was great for me. My foot felt locked into the shoe. So yeah, it makes sense for a Kyrie shoe. And uh, also now moving on to the aesthetics. I love it. This shoe looks absolutely amazing. And the colorways that are, that are coming out for the Pro are really, really dope as well. Uh, so tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. And what do you guys think looks better, the Pro or the regular version? I feel like I like the Pro a little bit better, right? Uh, and also ventilation, ventilation is also really good. We have a good amount of airflow through this, right? I don't know if you guys can see. We have some open areas here in the textile material. So uh, that provides for good airflow and also here in the toe box. So uh, this shoe has pretty good ventilation as well. And now wrapping things up, the Shockwave 5 Pro is a really, really nice shoe. And it makes sense that it's Kyrie shoe. It feels like a guard shoe as well. So if you're a guard, you're gonna love this shoe, right? Uh, the, the question of course is 200 bucks. Are you gonna spend 200 bucks on a shoe um, I mean, if you if you don't really care about that, then yeah, this is a great great option. And I also really did enjoy playing in this shoe as well. But the thing is, it does feel a little bit different than Kyrie's like Nike shoe, right? So uh, I guess one thing that is similar though is the outsole curvature. There is a little bit of an outsole curvature so you can do um, these types of movements. However, the court feel is way better in this shoe than any other Kyrie's like in, in the Nike shoe line, right? And also the cushion is way better, especially for step and comfort. I guess besides, you know, if you if you count or if you really like zoom struggle in the forefoot, uh, but honestly, I like this setup a little bit better because it provides better step and comfort in the heel and also in the forefoot and or just as good and also you're lower to the ground, right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you don't wanna spend the money, then obviously go with the regular Shockwave 5, but it's not as good, but it's still like not that big of a difference. You know what I mean? The only difference that the Shockwave 5 Pro has is I guess it has better quality materials. It has more carbon fiber and all that. The step in comfort is slightly better. And I guess uh, there is a little bit more heel compression, but that's about it. And is that worth like the $80 price increase? I don't think so. Uh, although I would say the Pro is still a little bit better. It's not worth like that price difference in my personal opinion, right? So the Anta Shockwave 5 Pro is very, very nice. It's an amazing performer and I'm super duper excited about Kyrie's signature shoe with Anta. Hopefully that comes out soon next year. Um, but anyways, that about concludes my performance review of the Shockwave 5 Pro. Again, if you guys do want to cop, I try to leave a link in the description box, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.